blank database and import data two because we've done this once before. Import data two because we've done this once before. So I, I, I wanna, don't want to mix that up. Okay, so we're going to create a brand new blank access database. Uh, we have a sample starter table here. We'll just delete that. All right, now we're going to bring our data in. Um, we've gotten the Excel spreadsheets as an intermediate step. The rest should be very straightforward. Uh, external data. Oh, did I say we were going to do another team? Ah, what the heck? Let's do it. We got time. <laughs> I want to, you know, just just because I want to, but I want to use a different site, right? So let's let's go. Um, let's go my old team from back east, and let's not use ESPN. Let's use something different, just so we can get, you know, I, mean, I, I want to do this other, just so we can get like you know different, see different sources and how they how they work. Okay, so this this one is from NHL.com, uh, so we can get so we can see what it's like with a slightly different format. That's why I'm doing this. All right, so let's do the same thing here. Uh, we'll do, we'll go th we'll go through this one a little faster since you already pretty much. Um, uh, you know what? Let's do this in a separate worksheet for now. We, we want to combine them because we, it's going to be part of the same table. But for now, we'll we'll, we'll combine them afterwards. Okay, this also looks like it'll come through fairly nicely, and ah, it didn't even put the numbers in, although it did put that C for captain and star for whatever the star indicates. Um, okay, but let's let, let's go ahead. Oh, the position is in its own column, so we don't have to worry about that in this one. So, uh, nice to have jersey number, but let's not overcomplicate it. Uh, we don't need to know whether they shoot right or left-handed, so let's just delete the rest of these. Okay, so we will do the first last name separation. Uh, but first, let me put the position first because uh, otherwise, I don't, I don't want to overwrite columns when we do the separate separation. And actually, uh, I'm thinking uh, the separate the uh, text to columns will have an additional benefit. We'll be able to get rid of these extra. Um, because they're space separate, we'll be able to get rid of these extra characters more easily. Now, what happened here? Uh, something went wrong because we have position here. Here we have shoots. Here we have height. Um, let's see what happened here. I, I, I'm going to do an undo here. Oh, that's the way it imported. Oh, I see. Okay, because it left out the position here because now we're all defense and go. Okay, I see. All right, so we do have to, we, we do have to do one more thing. All right, so um, we're gonna have to put uh, these are defense. We're gonna have to put these in here, and we're gonna have to put G's in here. All right, there we go. Uh, let's take out these excess rows. See, I, I don't, I like to do these videos kind of impromptu because I want you to see the process, you know, I want you to see the thinking process where things don't always go the way you want them to go, you know, and, I, and, and you know, if you work on these things, you want to see the thought process that's used. All right, so um, this is another excess row. And we don't need shoots. Let's see. I think we can take the rest of this out. And then we'll just do again what we did before with the uh, text to columns. Again, I'll, I'll just I'll do this kind of quickly this time. We've already seen it. Uh, delimited, space, finish. Uh, well, no, let's we'll do text. Not too fast here. Text, do not import. Is there another one here? I thought there was a fourth column. Anyway, finish. There we go. 
position. And I think, let's see, what did we do here? We did first name and last name. Oh, we did team too. We got to do that. Okay. Okay. And so, actually, we don't need to type those column names in here because we're just going to cut and paste into here. Um, now we just have to make sure we put the right team here and the New Jersey Devils are team ID 11. Okay, so just put 11 and we'll copy that all the way down. Okay, there we go. And you know, if you wanted to make the entire league, you could put more teams in here, but I think two is enough to illustrate um, the process and um, get multiple data sources just to see how you know, the manipulation is going to be a little different. We needed to separate the numbers out on one, but not the other. You know, they're all a little bit different. And so I think it's important to see data from two different sources uh, and, and, and how those can differ just a little bit. Okay. Uh, we can delete this now. We don't need sheet two anymore. And we can uh, save this. Okay, now. We're ready to go back into the Access Database. All right, now we're gonna go to External Data, tab here, New Data Source from File and from Excel. You could bring in from another Access Database, from all sorts of things here. Um, we're gonna just do Excel. And now we're gonna have to browse to where we uh, left our, our teams uh, file. Okay, so we, we we saved it in Teams XLSX. All right, import into a new table. That's what we want to do. Okay, now you see these are the two worksheets. So let, 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 let let's start with Teams. We we'll go next. First row contains column headings. That's why we have to be careful. Uh, in some cases, the column heading was in the second row, so we, you know, it has to be formatted a particular way. All right, so let's do the teams here. Uh, this is team ID. Any number is going to default to double, and double is kind of like the decimal. I guess, you know, you never know when, it, when there could be decimals in there, so it just kind of defaults to that. Uh, we're just going to make it an integer. That'll, actually, even byte would probably be enough because it's not going to go above 256. But actually, yeah, we'll go to integer because if we're, if we're going to relate the tables, yeah, that's kind of a good default. It's not going to make that much of a difference in space. Indexed, yes, um, because this is going to be a primary key. In other words, this is going to uniquely identify our, um, our team. So I'm going to say index no duplicates. All right, then we go to the next one. This is going to be text, index no, team name, yeah, and that's it. Now we already added, added a primary key here. It's going to be team ID. Okay, import the table called teams. All right, everything went well. You know, it depends. It depends. You you can usually you know usually it imports pretty well. Sometimes if Access finds data that it's kind of unsure of, um, it might give you errors and say these rows didn't import. Uh, dates are particularly notorious for giving uh, problems. Okay, but it looks like everything's good. Um, and I believe if we go, that should be the prime set of as the primary key. Let's just go into. Um, let's go into design view and we see it is there. Okay, good. All right, that's teams. Now we just gotta do the same thing for players. So we're gonna do the same thing, external data. And it's the same file. This time we're gonna choose the players. And just occurred to me, we might wanna put a player ID in here just so we had team IDs. We can always do that after the fact. Uh, so team, position, first name, last name. So team, again, we'll say first rows, column headings, team. That's gonna be an integer. Uh, we don't want this indexed. We don't, 
Yeah, we don't really... Well, index, we might want an indexed. Index basically is like index, it's like think of guide words in a dictionary. If we ever wanted to search by a team, um, we might want to having index would make it easier to search, and we're not going to be constantly uh, inserting new teams once the players are in. So you know what? I'll, I'll I'll say yes, but I can't say obviously I can't say no duplicates because there clearly are duplicates. Maybe that's a little advanced for this video. I apologize, but anyway. Okay. If you don't, if you don't understand what an index is, don't worry. I, I was, uh, I was uh, me being my uh, usual anal self with this. You know, when you're a professional, you, you just want to do everything letter perfect. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Let's let's let access add a primary key. Let's put make a player ID uh, field. That's a good idea. Because um, we do want something to uniquely identify a row. We can't, obviously, we can't do it by first name or last name. Even the combination, you have two players named Joe Smith, and there you go, right? So let's, let it, let's have it create an ID. Um, we want to name it player ID, not just ID, but we can change that afterward. Okay. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, design view ID. I'm just going to rename this player ID. The idea of auto number is if we added a if we added a new player, you see it automatically does a new player ID. We cancel this. Oops. We add an, another player now. See now it goes to fifty nine. It's not going to reuse fifty eight, and that's a very important feature. You, you just, 58 and now 59 are verboten. <laughs> we don't reuse them ever. Okay, looks good. I think we got it. I, we, we got our teams, we got our players. Let's just do one more thing and let's create a relationship between the two tables. And let's remove these. Show table, let's bring the players and teams tables in here. And let's create the relationship between um, team ID and teams and team, it's not called team ID, but that's basically what it is. It's the number, team number here. And we're gonna enforce referential integrity. Uh, you can see our video on referential integrity if you wanna know more details. But basically, what, in a nutshell, what we're saying here is if you're going to enter a player in this table, and generally we wouldn't use the table to enter it directly, but if you're gonna enter a player in this table, um, you have to enter an existing team number. If the teams go to one to 32, I can't enter a player in team 33 because it doesn't exist. And that's really what we're doing here. Um, and this will only work if we don't have pre-existing data that violates that condition, which I don't believe we do. Um, cascade update and cascade delete. I don't think those are going to apply. We'll leave those off. And there you have it. And so now we open teams and see we have this little plus sign here. Now we don't, we don't have players for most of these, but we have the Devils players that we imported. And we have the Seattle players that we imported. So that's, that's uh, kind of cool. You can see it's almost like a subtable within a table. That, that's, that's the power that Access brings you that, that Excel just can't. Okay, so we've showed the process of importing data from external sources. And again, you can do this from uh, spread, uh, from, well, spreadsheets would be direct. Uh, you can, we can do this from PDFs, from all sorts of data sources. Um, some are going to require more manipulation in Excel than others. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the imports we did are not among the more complicated ones that you'll see, but it demonstrates the concept that when you're making a new database, generally, or m most of the time, you're going to be using pre-existing data, you might be importing data from another program, like um, like QuickBooks, right? You might have accounts that you're bringing in. QuickBooks and Access work very well together. See our video about that. And, um, you know, you could be you know, data from government sources or from, or from, you know, goodness knows where. So 
Uh, it's very important because not all data tables are going to be com created completely from scratch. Sometimes you're going to need pre-existing data where it's much more easy to, um, to import them in. I have another database where just for we're just for entering addresses, I want them to enter an existing state. So I have a table of states. Where did I get that table from? We imported it from elsewhere. You can import a table of zip codes and cities. So you can enter a zip code and have that automatically uh, populate the city. So there's, there's all sorts of possibilities we can do with this. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna leave the video there. Thank you for watching. As always, it, please remember to like, subscribe, leave any questions and comments below. Um, we love getting comments. We love getting questions. We love getting uh, ideas for future videos. So please, um, by all means, don't, don't, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. We hope this video was all the help you needed for your Access database. If you are struggling to create an Access database that does what you need it to do and just want someone to make that happen for you, that is the business we are in. Our contact information is below the video. You can reach out to us and we will work with you to determine how long it will take and how much it will cost to get your database up and going. If the time and cost are acceptable to you, WSI will get to work and make your database vision a reality. Perhaps Microsoft.net or MS SQL Server would be the better choices for your new database, so it can run on your Windows desktop or anywhere in a web browser. WSI will help you make this determination if you like. Again, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day.